Midway through the Sports Mag Zone for this Wednesday, uh, 12th uh, One Day International 100 from Shea Hope could not prevent the West Indies from losing the first One Day International on their tour of Pakistan by five wickets earlier on Wednesday at the Multan Cricket Stadium. After winning the toss and batting, the wind is posted 305 for eight from their 50 overs, led by 127 from Hope and 70 from fellow Barbadian Shamar Brooks. Harris Rauf picked up four for 77 for the visitors. The hosts then made 306 for five with four balls to spare. Man of the match, Babar Azam, took his tally of ODI centuries to 17 with 103. Imam ul Haq contributed 65 and Mohammed Rizwan 59. Alzara Joseph was the pick of the Windies bowlers, taking two for 55. And joining us from Pakistan to recap the game is journalist Andrew McLean. Andrew, welcome to the Sportsmax Zone. Uh, not a bad batting effort by the West Indies, given what we have seen uh, from them over the years in, in white ball cricket. But they weren't good enough to fend off the Pakistan batting reply. Well, they came very close, though. They, they came incredibly close. Um, actually, when, uh, when Shea Hope got out, I kind of thought to myself, oh, it's about now they could do with Kyron Pollard. Um, but actually, there were some nice cameos at the end by Powell and Shepard, which uh, Powell them on to 305. But I guess in the end, they were about 15 runs short. Um, but actually, in the end, it was just a brilliant cameo from um, uh, from Kushadil, uh, the Buc number seven for Pakistan, and uh, he he smashed three sixes off the was it the third to last over, I think, from uh, Shepard and. That eventually turned the match. Mm. Or you say they were just about 15 runs short or so, Andrew, but did you think they would be short when the innings folded? Did you think that total by the West Indies was a total that they could defend? Uh, probably not. Uh, I said at the innings break, uh, I felt that uh, West Indies had a very good chance of winning it if they could get two or three quick wickets, like, say, within the first 10 overs. Uh, they didn't manage to do that, um, and that probably cost them in the end. Uh, what you have to remember is that uh, in the recent one-day series against Australia, uh, Pakistan chased down, they batted second every time, and they seem to prefer that. And uh, uh, they chased down 350 in the last match uh, in Lahore, um, with Baba Azar making 100 there as well. Um, so, you know, th three, three. 305 didn't really feel like a, depend a defendable score. 3 350 would have felt de defendable, but as it turned out, uh, as I say, probably 320 would have been enough in the end. Ba based on what you saw earlier today, um, what would you attribute to you know how the Windies bowlers struggle to pick up wickets? Good players. Um, what you've got to remember is that uh, Imam al Haq, uh, he's had a run of, so against Australia, he scored 100 in both the first two games, then an 89 not out in the third game. Baba Azam, I mean, everyone knows how good he is. He, he, today he scored his third consecutive 100 in a row, which incidentally, uh, he's done that twice now on One Day Internationals, uh, and the first time was actually against the West Indies in 2016. So, you know, you've got two very, very good players at the top of the order. Um, and then they brought in Mohamed Rizwan at number four today. Uh, so he opens in T20s. That's a bit further down the order in test matches. And they put together two partnerships of over 100, whereas West Indies only managed the, the 154 between uh, Brooks and Hope. So, um, yeah, good players was, was probably the main thing that stood out. But I don't think the West Indies bowled badly by any means. They fielded well. Um, but in the end, you know, they, they came up short with just a few balls to spare. Yeah, unfortunately that happened to them. Talk to us though about that century from Shea Hope. Just the quality of his performance. Well, he's a quality player, isn't he? I mean, he he, uh, he did okay in the in the Caribbean. Uh, sorry, in the Netherlands. Um, um, but you know, I think he averages around about 50 in, in this form of the game. Um, but you know, with along with Brooks, you know, they just they just batted so well. Arguably, you could say uh, Hope was a little slow. His his uh, innings was 118 balls to get his hundred. Um, 
but what what a player, you know, what a what a player to have on the top of the order. And I I heard on a Caribbean podcast uh, last night before the match that hope to the West Indies is is, is to what Baba Azam is to the you know, the, the Pakistani team, uh, just in terms of his importance. And uh, yeah, he he batted beautifully today. Although he felt felt to a phenomenally good catch, it must be said. Mm. Um, Babar Azam, Andrew, is the number one T20 batsman in the world at the moment, number one ODI batsman in the world at the moment, and pretty highly placed in test rankings at number four. I saw a report recently that he's harboring thoughts of being number one in, in all formats, which, to be quite honest, given his talent, I don't, I don't think that's beyond him. Do you? Well, this is my uh, second tour of Pakistan and this year, and uh, you know, pa- Pakistanis are, are avid uh, Twitter uh, followers, and there's been a lot of talk in the la- last few days since I've since I've been here about the the, the so-called Fab Four, which is a, co- a term uh, coined by Martin Crow, the former New Zealand player, uh, back in 2014, where he just selected four young players uh, that he thought were. You know, were, were, were very talented. Uh, that being Kane Williamson, Steve Smith, um, Virat Kohli, and Joe Root. Um, and of course, Pakistani fans have, have sort of clung on to this, and they they feel slightly aggrieved that Baba Azam isn't isn't in this group. But you know, that wasn't Martin Crow's intent. But you know, the the other thing that what people are trying to say now is that well, he doesn't need to be in the Fab Four if he can be in the Fab One. <laughs> Andrew, we'll, we we leave it there and let's hope the series will be a competitive one because the first ODI was certainly competitive and let's hope that the West Indies can keep their heads high and make a competitive run of this series. Thank, thanks for linking with us. Thank you for having me on the show. Okay, that's Andrew McLean talking to us live there from Pakistan. Now, we're still talking cricket. There were wins for the Windward Islands women, Jamaica and Barbados. On the opening day of the Cricket West Indies, T20 Blaze being played in Guyana. The Windward Islands beat the Leeward Islands by four wickets in a low-scoring affair. Batting first, the Leeward's women could only manage 56 for seven from their 20 overs. Rosalie Dolabai, who is a Trinidadian playing for the Leeward, she led the way with 21. Pearl Etienne was the pick of the bowlers, finishing with figures of two for eight. West Indies women's leg spinner Afi Fletcher took one for four. Now, the defending champions Barbados defeated Guyana in another low-scoring encounter. Skipper Haley Matthews struck 35 and Kishona Knight added 17 as Barbados were dismissed for 86 in 19.2 overs. sherry Fraser, the pick of the Guyana bowlers, grabbing 3 for 11. Guyana then fell just seven runs short of the target, finishing their 20 overs at 79 for 9. West Indies women wicketkeeper Shemaine Campbell top scored at 33. Pacer Shakira Selman picked up three for 26, and uh, Alia Aline, she picked up three for 18 as well for the Barbadians. Jamaica's women had a comfortable victory over Trinidad and Tobago, batting first. They posted 133 for six, the Jamaicans did, from their 20 overs. Chanel Henry blasting 52, while Natasha McLean added 30. Kanisha Isaac was the best TNT bowler, taking two for 21. Trinidad and Tobago were then bundled out for 55 in 13.3 overs, courtesy of a five-wicket haul. Five for eight it was by Nisha Ann Waysom. Kirbina Alexander top scored for TNT with 12. She was the only into double figures, only bat- batter into double figures. Chanel Henry took two wickets. We go to break back with more on the zone after this. Thank you for watching Sportsmax on YouTube. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and to click the notification bell to stay informed.